and welcome back to another episode of Board and Talk About Sports. I am your host, uh, Steve Bourne. Um, first of all, I just want to, uh, uh, now that the Stanley Cup playoffs and NBA championships are over, I want to say big congratulations to the Denver Nuggets for the first uh, championship in franchise history. And one fun fact about Denver winning the NBA title. They're the first Western Conference team since 1979 to win an NBA title not from the state of Texas or California. Because since then, it's been the Lakers, the Warriors, and then the three Texas teams, San Antonio, Houston, and uh, Dallas. So big congratulations to them. And the best part is, is their two best players, neither one of them are American. You got Nikola Jokic, um, the, Ser the Serb, who's probably right now easily the best player in the NBA, uh, led the playoffs in points per game, rebounds a game, and assists per game. First time this ever happened. So I think it's safe to say what Jokic did in these playoffs is probably the greatest playoff run of all time. And big congratulations to him. And also big congratulations to basically his partner in crime, who had a really decent playoffs, uh, tailed off a bit at the end because he had a bit of a skin burn on his hand, took off a hunk of skin. But um, Kitchener, Ontario's own Jamal Murray who uh, was averaging about 24, 25 points a game in the playoffs and also had a triple-double in the NBA Finals. So congratulations to the Denver Nuggets. Congratulations to their fans. And, um, I mean, I didn't watch most of the finals just because the game started at 8, 30, 9 o'clock, and when you have to be up early in the morning, it just it unfortunately just doesn't work. Uh, you can see the highlights, but you didn't watch much of the game. From what I gathered, though, even with the long layoff, Denver didn't miss a beat. I think Miami ran out of gas. Um, I mean, they had to go to two straight game sevens against the Knicks and the uh, and the Celtics. And when you're facing probably one of the best teams in the in recent memory, that Denver Nuggets team, I don't think there was anybody was going to stop them, anyways. Um, but uh, my main topic today is the Stanley, the Silver Stanley Cup has gone golden. Um, the Vegas Golden Knights, uh, what can you say? Um, never got pushed to a game seven, uh, came close a couple times with a couple of game sixes in the West, but the Panthers, I, I mean, when Bobrovsky, uh, was made human again, Florida had, Florida's offense really wasn't anything special this entire playoffs after Boston. And the only reason their offense was good against Boston is Boston's goaltender was hurt. Uh, Olmark was clearly hurt, uh, probably after about game four or so. And by the time they pulled him for Swayman in game seven, it was too late. But uh, Bobrovsky was pretty much the main reason they got past Toronto and um, Carolina. Toronto and Carolina just couldn't create enough traffic to get in Bobrovsky's way. They, they, Toronto and Carolina were just too small. Um, Vegas, not so much. Vegas is full of basically what Florida is, but better. Um, more clutch scoring, bigger bodies, hungrier. And, uh, the injuries coming out for Florida are actually quite stunning. Aaron Ekblad, um, first overall pick, uh, about five, six years ago, uh, from, uh, defenseman from the Barry Colts. Uh, what did they say? Broken foot, torn oblique, and dislocated or separated shoulder. Um, game f uh, three, I think it was, is Matthew Kachuk cracked sternum. Um, a lot of those injuries, I don't care if the player is playing or not, they're, that player is useless. They're completely useless on the ice. Um, but good for Ve I don't think those injuries would have mattered anyways. Like Vegas was just too dominant. Uh, Jonathan Marsh or so, uh, only the second undrafted player ever to win the Conn Smythe. You, you can't ask for a better feel-good story than that, especially he was the player that Vegas took from Florida in the expansion draft. So it's a bit of, a, I guess, a karma <laughs> coming back to Florida. You left me unprotected? Yeah, I'm going to take your cup. So, but uh, that's uh, with Vegas, like they lost game one to the Jets, and then won the next four, as a lot of people like to call that, almost like a five-game sweep. Uh, went back and forth with the Oilers for a bit before the Oilers decided to only score on the power play and not even strength. 
Vegas can go as well. We can score both ways, so Vegas and six. Uh, and then Vegas had a 3 nothing lead on Dallas, uh, mostly because, um, again, Vegas just threw their body at uh, Dallas. Dallas couldn't respond, and by the time Dallas got things going, unfortunately, again, too little, too late. And then with the the Stanley Cup, the Stanley Cup final was just a glorified ass kicking. Pardon my language, but that that's exactly what that was. Um, one game, Florida won. Uh, they needed a big. They got a big goal from Kachuk at the end and got an overtime winner, which was a lot of their forte against Carol against Boston, Carolina, and Toronto was uh, overtime overtime wins. I mean, I think they won what. All their games against Carolina, all their uh, wins against Carolina were one-goal games. Uh, three of their four wins against the Leafs were one-goal games. Um, that's one reason why Florida made it to the Cup final. They could score in the clutch. Um, just, but uh, Vegas, uh, they just they dominated. I think that's the best way to put it. They they just dominated. Um, they've got a good team. Obviously, they won the Cup, but they've got a They've shown that you can still be... They were still the top seed in the West. Um, they weren't one of the top five teams in the league. The top five teams in the league in the regular season were all Eastern Conference teams. But Vegas... Um, that's the best way to put it, is a big, strong, physical team who can score. Aiden Hill um, just made himself a bunch of money. And when he started the playoffs, he was on the bench. And then Boisois got hurt, the Vegas uh, Vegas goalie, uh, against uh, Edmonton. He came in. Vegas didn't miss a beat. If anything, they got better. Aiden Hill is a free agent this summer. Going to make a nice chunk of change somewhere. I don't think Vegas has the cap room to keep him. But uh, but this is the Vegas style. Is They always go to the cap, trade a couple of players, maybe take a small step back, and then come back a year and so later stronger than ever um but they've still got uh, the original three nights with uh, riley um jonathan marcia show and william carlson and those are the those core three especially carlson and marcia show i mean they, they said they got vegas the cup i mean and then when they add vegas added mark stone alex petrangelo uh, Barbashev was huge for Vegas in the playoffs, not just physically, but also can score as well. Um, teams are going to be looking for a guy like uh, like Barbashev. Um, hell, even this summer, uh, somebody to a lesser extent, like a uh, Michael Bunting, if Bunting could ever keep his mouth shut to the refs. Guys like that, after seeing what Vegas did, are going are going to be very valuable, big physical. Not so much with bunting, but physical guys who can score, not afraid to be a you know what disturber, um, and just guys who are not afraid to throw their weight around. Um, Ryan O'Reilly is going to be another classic example. He's probably going to get the biggest contract this summer uh, because uh, well, it's going to be him or him or Tarasenko that'll probably get the two biggest deals this summer. But. Um, yeah, so with Vegas, I think that's going to be the model teams are going to be looking for now is a physical team that can score and and clutch goaltending. You're going to see, um, there will, I I really do think there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of movement, um, especially for goalies this, uh, this summer um, with a potential buyout candidate of Matt Murray in Toronto. Then you've got free agent goaltenders of uh, Tristan Jari, you've got free agent goalie like Aiden Hill. Um, hell, even Alex Lyon, who uh, stood on his head for the final month or so of the year just to get the Panthers into the playoffs. Kind of lost his mojo against the Bruins. but And then you've got uh, goalies on teams that are trade bait. You've got possible you got, um, Connor Hellebuck in Winnipeg. He's as good as gone. Um, there's some talk of the Flames might be flipping uh, Vladar, their uh, backup goalie, who a lot of people think is ready to be a starter, or at least in a, in a dual role. And then you've got a um, restricted free agent goalie here in Toronto with um, Ilya Samsonov. Um, do the Leafs look to upgrade with the uh, uh, combo? Because Joseph Walla is ready for the NHL, and just he needs his chance, and I think uh, this coming up year, he'll get it. 
but yeah, Vegas has set the model um, for what you want your Stanley Cup uh, winner to be. Big, physical, can score. Not a ton of skill. Like, you don't need three, four, 30 goal scorers. You need maybe just one or two, but a bunch of 20 goal scorers. Safe. And a big physical defense that you don't want to mess with. Uh, and clutch goaltending. But yeah, so that's what uh, I think you're going to see this summer is a, is a lot of a lot of teams go for the physical route. Um, one defenseman that Calgary's uh, going to have to trade because he says he doesn't want to sign there apparently is Noah Hannafin. Um, I can see there's the lineup for him is going to be is going to be long. Uh, definitely uh, the Leafs with the new general manager Brad for living since he had him in Calgary is definitely going to want him. But um. This yeah the uh, the draft is in about a week and a half. I'm recording this on uh, Sunday, June 18th. Happy Father's Day to everyone, including my father Carl, um, and my father-in-law Dave Fitzgibbon, and uh, my brother-in-law, new father Justin Dial, who uh, I will have back on the program because that he was a very popular guest. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, that's my little uh, summary of the NHL, uh, uh, the Stanley Cup playoffs, and the NBA playoffs. Um, like this video, subscribe. Uh, I also just want to say a big thank you to uh, Steve Dangle. Uh, he announced about a week or so ago that he is leaving uh, Rogers. I um, I occasionally tune into the watch a Leaf game with uh, Steve Dangle. He's still going to be doing his Leaf fan reports. He's still going to be doing, and then he's got his own podcast network with uh, Adam Wild, formerly of uh, Virgin Radio, and. Um, I'm thinking maybe uh, start doing a watch a game with uh, with me. Uh, obviously, I can't have the game on on the on the screen as well for copyright reasons. But uh, maybe just uh, I'm watching the game in the corner, like watching it like this, and um, just uh, uh, responding to comments in in the section, and having a chat going while we watch, say, a Leaf game, Jays game, uh, whatever. Um, if you like that idea, let me know, and I'll try to get something going on a weekend or something like that and see how it goes. But until next time, stay safe out there. Um, enjoy, it looks like summer's finally here. Enjoy the weather. And until, like I said, also use the hashtag Born Sports. Like, subscribe. Please tell your friends. I want to get this off the ground. And until next time, stay safe.